وجد وجل من رغي مهوبانا في زار مولد من في البار ربا فنكاب تي في تلخادم رسول وجعل شقيرنا يوقر الكبير وجعل كبيرنا يحيل الصقير وجعل قلوبنا على توادد بلا تناسح ولا تحاسد ولا تقاس من ولا تدابد ولا تباد السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام سنجي بسيد من لما يسجب تتري السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وعلى بكاته سنجي بكاته Alright, I'm muted everybody again. If you want to say something, uh, you can unmute yourself. But for now, it's 7 11. We want to start. First of all, we want to thank you all for joining this call and uh, start with the prayer. Sing Mustafa. If you can please unmute yourself and start us off with the prayer, inshallah. A'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa khayri khadimihi wa mula. Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm al-dini iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين اللهم نستغفرك ونتوب اليك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر ان الانسان لفي خسر الا الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر فتاه وهاب يا رزاق يا ملك افتح وحب لي وارزقني بكم لنا ليقي اثقل عاجلا بالبشر مع مدد حتى اقيم للدين الله اركانه يشير الرجوع إلى توبة وحمني قطعا والتحمل وكمل لي بما زان حرب استجب والتكمل ما نويت الله تبلت بك تبنى فيك بنيانا أصبر ستوري أصلح موري كسر خيوري بلا كداي يا من أجاب من استجاب حبي إجابة في سن داي صلي وسلم على المتمم وكل يعص بلا انتهاء سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يتكون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله وكسر انتوى I mean, thank you, Sayyid Mr. Farah. Once again, thank you all for joining this call. Um, this is for our Foundation Shia Ahmed Baba of North America, known as FONCAP. Uh, this is the Youth Committee, part of an initiative that we want to start today and want to host every month. We choose a topic. It can go from religious topic to professional or school-related stuff. So um, just keep it in the loop, we will let you know the next time. Uh, we want to have hosted um, once a month, so every the first Sunday of each month, inshallah. And uh, we want to start by uh, telling you guys a little bit about the FUNCAP Youth Leadership Initiative, and, uh, and then we can start the um, conversation, inshallah. Right, can you see my screen now? Yes. Right. Uh, so, uh, FUNCAP Youth was created in 2017 at the Atlanta. We have, so the convention of FUNCAP is hosted every year in uh, different states. This year it was supposed to be in Baltimore, but I doubt that it will happen because of the virus. But it was created, the Youth Committee of FUNCAP was created in 2017 in Atlanta. And uh, so here is the mission statement of the Youth Committee of Fund Cap: is to create a platform designated for youth across the nation. It's basically to gather our all the youth in the U.S. in every diners um, and trying to create something that we all can benefit from. It can go from education to mentorship to scholarship to networking to uh sorry i have to admit some people yeah so trying to share uh, the teaching of Bamba in the united states for all the young people and also try to benefit um like the people 
let me see, let me start the conversation. I mean, the, sorry, my computer is lagging. Okay, so he is, here are the objective. So it's the religious education, outreach program, mentorship and fundraising and networking. And then we'll go in details in, in a moment. So the religious education is basically teaching the fundamation, fundamentals of Islam and uh, Islam morals, and as you can read, and the teaching of Sayyid Hamad Bamba, and create local, chap local chapters in every single diaries. The outreach program is basically translating the Khasidus and make sure we all have access into English Khasidus. And also online series like this one about Islam or Meridism we want to start. And then uh, whenever there is more events, we tend to forget that are Murids or are not even Muslim. And we want to have exhibitions to teach them about Muridism and Islam. And mentorship program. Uh, so we want to have a database where we will know the youth that are in the US, the Murids, and uh, know what they are doing, if you are in high school or college, or if you are working. And uh, yeah, so from there, we can create a database and working uh, designated for, um, if you are in college, we will match somebody in, uh, in, in high school, or if you're done working, if you're done studying in college, then we can uh, link you with somebody in college who can help, and then, also, to have a and provide resources for enough scholarship for people to have access to. So this is Dallas chapter, some things they have done. So Haja, if you can unmute yourself and tell us a little bit about things that you have done in Dallas. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. My name is Hud Judge I live in Dallas, Texas. Uh, just a few things that we've been doing here in Dallas overall with the FUNCAP chapter is basically volunteering in <clears throat> particular events such as Habitat for Humanity. In case you aren't aware of that organization, they basically help uh, build homes for the less fortunate. So alhamdulillah, we had the opportunity to participate in that and work alongside with other faith groups, which was very refreshing. We we're able to kind of share more information about Islam as well as uh, Muridism in general. Um, another thing we did also was we participated in something called uh, the spring cleanup in a city called Mansfield here in Texas. Uh, a couple of us went out there and volunteered, helped pick up trash, <coughs> and uh, was overall very rewarding. Um, we've also done work at uh, a masjid here in Dallas, uh, basically, where we distributed clothes to the less fortunate people. So we were able to actually accumulate clothes from the community and distribute it to them, um, which was very nice. We also managed to interview a couple of people there who have been coming to the masjid, alhamdulillah, every Sunday they provide um, food to those who are in need at the masjid. And um, we were able to ask people how they feel about that. And overall, they were very satisfied. Um, so those are a couple of things we've been doing um, because of COVID, of course. We've had to pause a few things for now, but <clears throat> once everything goes back to normal, uh, we will re resume our activities, inshallah. And if you guys have any questions, <coughs> excuse me, in terms of participating in FONCAB or establishing a chapter, or if you're in Dallas as well, uh, just let us know and we'll reach out to you guys. All right. Thank you, Aja. Um, what was Aja from uh, the Dallas chapter? are you on the call? Yes, I am. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about Detroit chapter and things you have done? Hello, salam alaikum, everyone. Um, um, I'm calling from Detroit, and I'm a part of the Detroit um, youth chapter in Funkab. So I guess I'm just going to be honest and state that we have not been as participative as we want to be this year. But uh, so how so far what we have accomplished our um, community services. We have um, worked with for Forgotten Harvest, and that's the picture that you see on the left. Um, what we have done is that we have gone there um, while we had a little bit of break. I believe it was uh, Thanksgiving break, maybe. Uh, we, we went there, we washed some 
um, producers such as um, legumes and um, peppers like that. And uh, we have packaged them with the people who work um, in Full Garden Harvest and um, they send them, um, the companies were sending it to uh, less fortunate people, if that makes sense. Um, just to kind of help them live a healthy uh, lifestyle. We have also done some other community service, service activities as well. And um, we also have worked with uh, mentorship programs, such as like mentoring and um, training. Like the picture you see on top, that was a robotic uh, training with uh, Auntie, uh, I believe, uh, yeah, it was Auntie, uh, I forgot her name. Wow, this is amazing. <laughs> but yeah, she was an engineer and she was definitely um, able to come and help people who were definitely passionate about robotics and um, engineering. And um, the bottom picture you see here um, is we also went to help at a community service and we were packaging um, things, um, getting them together to be shipped um, to people who needed it the most. Um, I'm sure we have done some more stuff, but just to kind of, you know, just like paint it put it down and let other people talk. I'm gonna stop it right there, but yeah. We would definitely love to be more um, involved. Um, hopefully uh, all of this pandemic thing will stop sooner than uh, later. And yeah, we can get back in the game like um, our friends are doing it back in Dallas. All right, thank you, Betty. Um, yeah, so this, I think both Dallas and Detroit have had um, panel discussions too. Um, it's not on the pictures, but that's some things that you can do as well. Uh, thank you. And Mustafa Asek from Alana, can you tell us a little bit about the Alana chapter? Hello, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum This is your last name. Okay, yes. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Um, so I guess I'll be speaking for the Atlanta chapter. Uh, we've had, we've managed to have a good number of events this year. Um, we started really in 2017 after the meeting from the Jafar um, Dubamba days that we had here, but we kind of really we're getting going this year. So we managed to have a, um, a board put together where we have the education board, we have the communication, and we have the organization team. So when we have the event here, usually we try to have a presentation by one of the young people to talk about what is the topic of the event. So for example, we had the Magdal Porohan this year. We had um, a panel of four of our members who talked about the life of Sahna Jara, and then we had some of the kids from the Dara to recite the Quran. Um, things that we've done here in Atlanta, other than the Magal activities, we have a regular Kurel um, Tutank, which is the, the kids you can see in the picture, who usually every Tuesday they'll meet and learn how to recite the Hasidas. Um, we had one day where we went to the, um, the park here in downtown Atlanta and distributed 70, between 70 and 80 bags of um, supplies and things for the homeless. I might be forgetting some of the other events we've had. If anybody else from Atlanta is in, you can remind me. Um, and then we had a cleanup before the uh, before the Magdal that we had recently. We had a cleanup day where we had everyone come in on the weekend and we cleaned the masjid, cleaned the um, the streets in the area as well, uh, swept up leaves and everything, and uh, um, outside and inside. Those are the things I can remember, but we're still working on some other. Oh. And an important one, this Ramadan, we had a, um, a series of videos where each day one of the members would read a chapter out of the life of the Prophet Muhammad So that was um, Sana Aisha Sek. That was her idea. And um, everyone from the team managed to put in um, their part for the whole month. So that was one of the things we did recently. And we're working on some other things soon, inshallah. But I won't go on. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um, those are some of I would say the three most active chapters that we have had. And uh, of course, we want to expand it to more. And there are some people that reached out already. So we will plan one session for people that want to start a local chapter in their diary, inshallah. And if you are interested in that, please reach out to me. And uh, don't forget to fill out the information on the form that I have um, posted on the chat. You can see the link there. Um, yeah, so. Uh, I'm not going to keep long about the phone cab youth. So I will let Sayyid Mustafa start. Um, yeah, if you have uh, any question, please you can uh, write it. You can write it in the comment box. Sayyid Mustafa, how do you want to proceed with the question? Do you want to 
wait until after the end or after every section or do you want to wait? Do it while you go along. Allah. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillah. Rasulilla, <laughs> Inshallah, we are very appreciative for this uh, initiative that you have to reach out. The topic you choose is a very good one, a very ancient one. It's been here for since the beginning of time. It's basically what is our role. In every generation, uh, that question has been asked. Uh, advice has been given, books have been written, uh, speeches have been made, imams have been uh, instructing communities to do just that. So today, if you, the young, come and, you know, start the same process again, we can do anything except to be appreciative to you and be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He bestows us the ni'mah of having our own kids, you know, doing the same uh, effort that uh, their fathers were doing. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Uh, as you just ask, we can do it any way you choose from, whichever. But I think overall, we're going to need the opportunity today to share with you what we have in mind in terms of how we're going to continue this. What impressed me the most is rather than going outside looking for someone who can help you, you're looking inward. That's very good. Because in the community, people who are very quiet, but who are full of experience, they can share with you. Really, they, 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 these are your fathers, your uncles, and they are in the community, very humble. But they are staying on, on experience that you can use. Each is a walking book. You can you can tap and it's good from now on to make the turn i'm going to make the determination inshallah to help you work with these guys but it is a good initiative and inshallah it's going to be very good for us because i noticed you already what what is your mission statement you already put it here and we see it mm. you already know what are your roles i mean this this nothing to say about that, you already know that. But how best can we do it? Okay, and the question you ask is, has been asked before. In every generation, give its answer. It would be good for us today to share the previous answers compared to where we are right now. Easily, it will be clear in front of you where you're gonna put your, 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 your next step. So if you want to go further with the question, start with it. We can do it. But I think it would be nice for me to better understand the perspective that we're coming from today. If I just make a small introduction and talk about how do we get here from the beginning to now. In, in summary, though, in summary, because that's, that's a big, big, big topic. Uh, can we do that? Yeah, please. Inshallah. And also, I would like for you to forgive me. Uh, you're going to mix Wolof and English. The Wolof may be very hard for you. At the same time, the English can be even harder because he's a Ndongadara English. <laughs> okay. Uh, in the beginning, 
the human being is always evolving. Before anything, his relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created it and established it. As the human being being a spirit and state of being a spirit, Allah says in the Quran, and the scholars talk a lot about that. And I think we good it's good for us also to always remember this because it was a pact, it was a contract. He says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ظُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَسْحَدَهُمْ عَلَى أَنفُسِهِمْ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَى You hear that, قَالُوا بَلَى يَوْمَ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَى يَوْمَ أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَى It was a day, just like today. قالوا بلا سهدنا أن أن تقولوا يوم القيامة إن كنا عن هذا وافلين. In simply said, Allah asked His creation, who was at that time in the state of spirit, Am I not your Lord? And all of us, you, me, and whomever you know and you don't know, have answered the same. بلا, we agree that you are our Lord. That statement include that all the ordinance by Allah and all the prohibitions by Allah is to be abide by. Simple as that. No question asked. We all signed that document with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it, our job in this place, Allah affirmed it when we come here is وَمَا قَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبَدُونَ so our mission is to fulfill that contract. How do we do it? We fulfill it by worshiping Allah and Allah alone. When the human being come in a form of being like we are in the, by the creation of Adam alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does everything for a purpose. He create him in a way that he can forget with the forgetfulness. And he forget all the time. And due to this forgetfulness, he was, I mean, I mean uh, enticed to disobey. And from that, Allah forgive him though. But that is the main reason why we come to earth. But Allah didn't leave him alone. He continued to remind him. So what happened before wouldn't happen again. He teach him, he give him books so he can learn and teach and the process will continue. Since then, what is my role? How I do it? How should I do it? With whom I'm going to do it? Remain an eternal question and every generation has to ask it and has to provide his own answer. So it's a very long, 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 long history in that question. And we thank you for having that question today. And that continues until the day of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He did the same thing as before, the prophets before. Allah tell him, subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّ فَعَتِ الذِّكْرَى Remind them, because the human being is created with a state of forgetfulness. He has to forget. And then, therefore, he has to be reminded constantly. The Prophet was told, you, the Prophet, your responsibility first is to just to uh, remind them. But who's going to remember? Say, Okay. Whomever can benefit from it only will remember. And those are the ones who have fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what we're going to learn from there is... Who's going to really forget? That person will never have the interest in trying to remember. So you can be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You take the time to say how we're going to do it. That means you are trying, you're not trying to forget, you're trying not to forget. You are trying to fulfill your contract to keep it going. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. And that's what the Sheikh taught us. And he himself, radiallahu anhu, 
when he came, he came in a very difficult situation in Senegal. We all know that it's a long history, but we know how difficult it was. Uh, at that time, just to make it sure, he has to bring a new context in which we can ask what is our role. The situation he came in was very dangerous for the community, very hopeless and helpless because leadership has been destroyed and they were turned against it. The traditional rulers were fighting among themselves. The leaders of Islam were fighting with against them. At the same time, they were disputing things among themselves as Muslims. And then you have the new invader, which is the Europeans, who also goes to the uh, traditional leaders who used to have, you know, enemies amongst themselves. They have strong ones and the weak ones. They give strength in form of weapon to the weak ones, turn them against the people who used to, you know, rule on them. And all this mess created unclarity. People don't know what to do. People don't know where to go. And I think this is a point where you guys need also to, to focus on and learn the history and understand the context and uh, make sense of it. It's going to solidify where you can, when you can, where you can stand on. In this context, the sheikh has to fulfill the role of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at this moment, which is to guide people to the right path. But how do you do it? And this newcomer, his intention first was to clean off this path. That's, this is very difficult. So he cannot do it without completely having a different approach and understanding what he has to do in a different context than before, where you have to have strength, you have to stand up, you have to fight, you have to do it the old way. So he, but all sad and then, he knows that Allah is the one who allowed things to happen. All this mess that we are in at that time, we were in at that time, is up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we pray hard enough to help us, guide us through it. And he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do this, that. Does his mission come to be to establish Islam without this violence? Because that was the main thing that blinded people, scared people, destroyed families. And he himself, radiallahu anhu, uh, close relatives who perish in this conflict. In order for him to create a new environment, mm -hmm. to accomplish that what he wants, which is the, to continue the mission of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a different era, in a different area that is devastated by war and conflict. He didn't call upon the people and say, come and follow me. But he really well understand that in order to do that, you have to have dedicated people. So he chose tough environments to be there, to remove himself from even the comfort of houses similar to the one he used to live in. He goes to the remote area, knowing that only people with dedication will join him there. And then that's why you see all over the, the region at that time, all this Daru, Daru Salam, Tuba, that Bolem, the Kiga Hamilton is in the Sanjana, Sanjanako, the Chi, Lord Loko Sanjuan, Jamu Fayala, Nyakofe Fekofo, Mujapu Lynch. To all of those people, 
they were in great, great, great need in Kosovo law and law. Law to bar na ham, nyonyo, nalla nyu, nalla si bi jefle ti wana nyonyo. Kom nyonyo kubar ho dege, nyonyo ha ni si bi dalan jungle. Kom nyonyo bi dalan jungle, mokal al Quran jungle tere ham ham. Once you know that, you know the Quran as it known by anybody else. You know the tere, the the kutub. Hadith al bumman tu orang kamu kau ni kau ni apa kami? Wah, nak jeffin di kau ni is the same as everybody else, which was lots of dispute. This Imam is agreeing with this one. This one doesn't agree with this one. This one is a real Muslim. This one is not a real Muslim. Those are those were the uh, the theme of Islam as we know it then. So much, so many dispute. The first thing the Sheikh did for us was to make it simple. To give you the essential you need to know in order to worship properly. That was the essential. And when he make it, you know, an obligation upon himself to help people, and people, we can a lot of arguments where at the end you don't know who's right. He chose what he believe is the perfect and right. And whichever closer to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's what he chose for us. And he made that book available, and he said, Stick "With this." And then he advised everybody how to hold on to it. Yeah, you know. And his writing, you see, somewhere he would say, "Masikan bil kitabi maskaburiri biyadil qaidil basir al muin," meaning when you hold on to what I give you, you hold on to it as a blind man or woman. Would hold on to the hands of the guide who's helping him. So when you are blind, you can't see, and somebody is guiding you, and you hold on to their hand. You don't question where you go; you just follow because you trust. And usually, a blind is guided by who? A relative who loves him, a, ch a child. It may be a child, maybe something. It got to be someone know and someone you love and someone you trust. He says, when you hold on to what I give you, you're kind of like that blind man who hold on to it this way. You don't question when I tell you. This is how the older generation who, that time, mm -hmm. the same question was asked, what is the role of those, that generation? So the older generation, the, the way they played their role was they go join the sheikh and follow his orders and remain in his custody until he allowed them to leave after they become prepared to face the world the way the sheikh want the islam to be protected in the future that's very good important for you it's very important for you to know mm -hmm. those people the older generation that followed the sheikh in the wilderness as time goes by right after the sheikh was sent to exile some of them remain until the return of the sheikh, following the same instruction where the other people, uh, the leadership of the family, and the, the, the other Masai is sheikhs, such as Mam Cherna Ibrafati, such as Mam Sheikh Ibrafal, Mam Sheikh Anta, Sheikh Muhammad Al uh, Mustafa. All those Masayikhs behind, who left, who stayed behind until the Sheikh returned, uh, they continue the same teaching, the same formation, uh, until the Sheikh returned. To make it short, nothing changed. The belief they have, they never waver in it. But some of them started at that time going to the cities, going to the car going to St. Louis, going to places like that. Carrying on the same teaching that the Sheikh gave them. As time goes by, um, after the Sheikh, radiallahu anhu, uh, returned to Tuba, and then at that time, the European discovered it was better to relax uh, you know, the followers of the Sheikh to cooperate with them 
because they notice they have become an economic power, very powerful economically in terms of producing um, uh, peanuts and whatever else, and also being good consumers. They can relax or relax all, you know, control they used to have on them. So they were free to move on, move around, go wherever they wanted to go. Yet they carry their Murid culture with them, if I can say that. When they come to the cities also, their upbringing is completely different from that of the people who are well-to-do in the cities. Because the people who are well-to-do in the cities are closer to the colonialist and they are kind of a little bit tested the lifestyle, a little bit of the lifestyle of the Europeans, and they were considered at that time superior citizens. And yet, this follower of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, when they come to the city, they didn't have, they did not feel any sense of wanting to become like them. Rather, they chose, rather they chose to, to, to remain who they were. Okay, therefore, you can see easily that also they ask the question, what can we do? What is our role to remain who we are? Which is to remain Muslim and to remain the follower of Shia Ahmad Bam. That is important for us to know, and I think it's a good point that you can, you, can, you, can, you can investigate further. How did they do it in the cities? These people, when they come to the cities, they didn't bring money. They didn't bring the knowledge that the people of the city have, but they bring the tarbiyah of the Shia with them. What we can learn from them is, they hold on to the truth that the sheikh gave them. And they were proud of it. And they practice it. What we learn from that and should learn from that is, once you have the truth, put it to use. It can only produce excellence. And excellence is contagious. No matter how people dislike you, disrespect you, if they don't know you. But once they know that what you have is true and you have no hesitation being who you are and putting it to use properly, you will contribute to their bottom line. You will contribute what, to what they value. It doesn't matter whether you are in a company or you are in a relationship with a, with a family in terms of um, marriage, all of, all of that. It doesn't matter. Wherever you are, be who you are, especially when you are a Talib of the Shia. This is what we learn from those people. The reason they were able to do it, they ask the same question you asked today. What is our role? And also that coincide with their numbers increasing in the cities. And then you know the leadership of Muridiya always come after the Shia. They consider the Talibi, the Talibi of the Shia as everything. And what the relationship they keep with them is not just a relationship between the Talib of his follower, but it was like a family as well. That is very important. That's why when the Talibis come to the cities and become very numerous, and the leadership discover that also the city may influence their children to lessen what they learn from the, the Shia. This is where the idea of Daira come by Sheikh Ahmed Mbakke, Gaila Fatma radiallahu anhu. At that time, Sheikh Muhammad al-Mustafa, his father, was the Khalif with his brother, Sheikh Muhammad al-Fadr radiallahu anhu. This is how the idea, the, daira, the idea of daira come from, meaning the lifestyle that they have with the Sheikh in, in, in the wilderness is the one that they carry with them in the daira, in the cities. And these people, they first come to the cities. Their role was to help each other, to collect some money after, you know, the rainy season, so they can provide enough idea and they can provide enough for their family. These are the only two needs they have, provide for idea and provide for their families. And the idea, goes to the khidmah. Um, that was their role. 
in the series and they stick together. With the creation now of Daira, as planned by Sheikh Ahmed al Khadim, uh, Sheikh Ahmed Makki, with the digal of Sheikh Muhammad al Mustafa, you see immediately they, they were minorities in all the cities, but they organized themselves and they make a difference in every corner in every city where they are. That was very important for us to know. So in order for us to understand where we are today, we have to understand what we went through there. And uh, when we know it, we're going to see that the same question we ask, they ask, what is our role? Okay, they played over there in the cities. Time goes by the same way we immigrated from the cities. We immigrate now overseas. Here we are. Yeah. We are in America, we are in France, we are in Italy, we are all India, China, whatever. You know, uh, there is people, here we are. The reason for that also, Allah said in the Quran, wherever you are, is an earth belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is a masjid. As long as you worship over there, it is the same as where you were born. And also, that's why you hear people say, wherever you are as a murid, it's just like tuba if you are doing what you're supposed to do. So alhamdulillah, here we are in an early age. To today, you s this is the beginning of your life, but 20, 30 years ago, people were asking the same question in this new country of ours, United States of America, or anywhere else in Canada or Europe. What is our role? There is one thing that we have to understand in order not to take anything for granted. The first comers here, they were not as privileged as you are. When they come, most of us didn't speak English, don't know left from right. All they have the desire to provide their idea, the desire to provide for their families. And here we come, and the first who come will be the host of those who follow. And that's the way it has always been. And those who follow may not be even relatives. Your relationship with them is the sheikh. That's it. That's the only family ties you have. And the first comer would take care of the those who follow, the same they would take care of their own kind. That's they did because they know their role and because that's the tradition. And that tradition started from the, the Sheikh Ahmed Bamba taught his followers the same way that the Ansar and the Muhajirun related to each other. So you can easily make the comparison right there. When we did come here in very difficult conditions, we didn't know at that time, people who came here first, they didn't know the best safest neighborhood because they couldn't afford even to go there. All they wanted, affordable place to stay. And usually the affordable, the most affordable places are not the safest. When they see that they didn't have the desire to stay forever, they just wanted to stay a few months so they can go back home. But once you come in, you don't know when you're going back because you are already in a situation where you can provide a better life for your family and you don't want to give it up easily until you are regularized in this country in order to go back and forth. And for many of us, for many of people who will come here first, they did not have that luxury to go back you know, home easily as they want. They ask the same question you ask today. What can we do to maintain our deen? What can we do to maintain our talibic? So what was their role? They played very well. They stick together, they help one another, they recite the Quran. The most of these, they read the Qasida. The most and the best they did was they keep themselves, they keep their sanctity. They didn't go full around. And it was available to them to go mix themselves with different genders, which they didn't do. And the offer was there easily. But because of the tarbiyah, most of them, many of them, I can say, didn't even think about it. And also, they were in the middle of a war zone. Okay, the mid cities. Back in the late 70s and 80s, the drive-by shooting was around them. But yet, they, 
they didn't even feel the danger. I can testify to that. They live in it, survive it, and provide for their families until they were able, some of them, to go back home and get married. And you can see most of them, they get married late due to that. But all of this, they maintain the teaching of the Shia in, in, in socially, financially, and educatively, helping each other in every way they can. They did their role at that time until the arrival of Sunni Murtala, radiallahu anhu, to United States. He showed us, he really did decided to show the new arrival here how to do it. He's the one who first encouraged people to understand the fact that Allah give you your teranga here, appreciate it and stay. And when you stay, provide a place of worship for your families and for the community. And he bring his own money to give us to establish the Kusrin Tuwa. And now you see the importance of it. After him, Sayyid Mahmur continued the same mission. And you see the importance of it, which we should never take for granted. There are many communities who came here before us, the Nigerians, the Cameroonians, the Ghanaians, all of those good African people who are here before us. The respect we enjoy in our city is unique and is due to the leadership, like I tell you, who always think of the Talibis Serintua as the Khidma. This is unique for us. And uh, when he came here, he visited the cities, go to the authorities and let them know who we are. And just by going there, we, we are benefited gaining trust from them. Every city you go today, whether it's New York, Atlanta, Chicago, wherever the Sheikh set foot, you have many Talibis over there, but with good relationship with the city and complete respect and trust. And we didn't earn it ourselves. His presence make it easy and possible. So we should not take that for granted. That's why your role, if you follow this step, how do we get from where we were in the, in the wilderness to the cities and from the cities to here and doing what we're doing? And your fathers come here empty-handed, empty-headed almost, and manage to establish businesses, manage to sell whatever they want to sell until uh, going to school, doing all of those hard things to do and manage to, 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 to have wives and keep their sanity until you guys come and asking questions, which are questions, the same question that they used to ask themselves. They can be grateful. They should be grateful, but should not, you should not take anything for granted because you have what they don't have. Now you have the doors open for you. You have the communication capabilities. You can communicate in English better than we can. You are American. You have your papers. You don't worry about anything except to take advantage of it. So your role is whatever your fathers failed to do, you have to do it and do more of it, whether in terms of social, economic, finance, whatever you call it, you have to do more. But how you do it is going to be easier because you do it with more knowledge and accessibility to the society than they thought your fathers do. This is why... Foundation Sheikh Amadou Bamba, which um, group all of the diaries in the United States and Canada, understand this mission early. And we understand also the importance of diary. It's for sure you, the youth, have a different mindset than the rest of your parents in terms of how diary should function. That should not discourage you from going to the diary. So your role is to even better engage in the daira because daira is so essential. I can see the importance of daira equal to the importance of masjid in Islam. Daira is as important in the, 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 murid, the, in the muridia as a masjid is important in Islam. There is nothing functioning right now in muridia without a daira. You hear all the dairas in, in Foncap. Foncap is a daira. The daira within it are dairas. A daira is what is muqaddimatul khidmat to tuba. The safety of, of tuba is safinatul aman. The uh, tuba chikanam is a daira. Anything that function in your numerit is function because of a daira. So daira is very essential. Engage in it. And we also, you need to pay attention to one thing that is, that is brewing right now. Individualism is increasing due to the, the, the networking you guys doing in, in, in the internet. You can easily select who you talk to and who you not to talk to. You can be in the city you are in and ha select your friends around the world. 
one in Germany, one in Senegal, one in Atlanta, one here, one here, until you have 100 friends you, you, whom you share only thing you can, the things you agree with. That's not good. What is good is you have to engage in groups where disagreement happens, where people can really see different things and show it out. But the way the world is going is like, for example, um, only people who agree talk about things they agree. And then among themselves, they kind of talk down to whom they disagree with. That creates nothing but animosity and hostility. I think the best way is to use these mediums or to continue this, the tradition, which is welcome yourself to people whom you may disagree with in every level. What is the left diary level, the foundation level, the social level, whichever level you choose, just don't create a comfort zone for yourself and stay there. So your role is to really guide the, the work we, that was started when the, with the newcomers in this society through the diaries and through the helping hands. When it comes to education, I have advice to give you. Part of your work, I see it, you said, is to translate. We are working on it. And uh, we are working on it right now with people helping. That's the hardest and the most difficult area. So in the education committees, we would like to have some of you who want to volunteer with sharp English to help. We are working very hard on that one. We have, alhamdulillah, some progress. And the social issue, also you need to help in terms of adiyat rahma, and not only adiyat rahma, but we, that assures us help when we pass away. But when we are alive, we need help, and we don't have enough funds to do that. What is your idea on that? I think you need to engage on that. Um, the Kirsin Tuba, we have in the program uh, called Kirsin Tuba Fune. You, you must engage in that and, and invite, because you are the one who needs it. We, the old ones, we already have our kids and do our best. Some of us did well, some of us didn't do so well. But if there is one child of a Taliban who goes stray, is one too many. And also, I think part of your, your, your responsibility in thinking forward should be how do we reach out to those who didn't do so well in terms of their education? How do we do that? We need to reach out because we are in America. No matter what, no matter how we see it, no matter how much we pray, we're going to have American problem. American problem is, 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 is include a lot of things, but one of it is teenage problems in terms of relationship with the opposite gender, you know, um, alcohol abuse, substance abuse, early pregnancy, all of those things, we think about it and we would just say, oh, yalla tre, and we think you are exempt from it. If it doesn't happen to one family, if it, it may happen to one more somewhere we don't know. If it happened to any of us, is one too many. How do we address that? I think that should be, you should be more, um, capable than us to do that. Um, so, so we shouldn't take anything for granted. And uh, I'm just going to stop it there. And during the questioning and answering, we, we can go further on that. But my, my, uh, my take on how, where do we, what is our role is, has been answered because it is an old question. Like I started from the beginning, every generation asks that question and they do the best they can. The people who come before you, this is, in summary, what I think they did. So I think if you understand that, you would know what to do, which you already know because you outlined it on paper. But how is a matter of continuous discussion? Uh, Thank you, Sir Um We have any question? You can write it in the comment section or just email yourself. And I think we have one question. It says that he would like you to expand on how diaries should change to encourage more youth to come to diaries. To encourage kids how to come to diary. I think the answer should be the kid need to go to diary and tell tell the diary to do it. Okay. Um, the kids need to go to diary. I think we need to. They need all. We all need to hear that. Yeah. You 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 not. Because um, people are very hard. You have to understand this. It's very hard to bring change to people. Mm. That's just hard. That's the human nature. It's very hard 
to get people to come out of their comfort zone. It's very hard for me as a father who sit down with my people of my age, joking, laughing, kidding, doing all of those silly things that we enjoy. And most of us think that diary should be about that. To just suddenly say, I'm not going to do it no more because the kids need to take over. It's not going to happen. So my advice to you is, first, take this step I, I just outlined for you here in summary. Know the history of what you are involved in. That way you're going to appreciate the effort of your father and your mothers. The elderly who sit in the diary, drink coffee and talk nothing but Wolof, they have accomplished something for you, which you need to take over. How you're going to take over is the things they cannot do for themselves. They are things they cannot see for themselves. You come and propose those things, okay? Always amongst them, there's going to be someone who is younger. If the jury of the diary is 60, 65, there is a member of the diary who's blessed enough to be very active with them, and he's on his 20s and 30s. That's your connection to the, to the diary. Go with to that person, explain what you can offer, see things that is going wrong, and try to change it from there. For example, one thing I really love to see change, the diary we do very, very late into the night. That has to change. You can talk to all of these older people. They cannot do it. So what are you going to do? Hey, have a couple of kids, three kids, four kids, come to diary, have your own diary early. Talk to you about things you need help. That you may need help in different area. They don't even pay attention to it. So I think... I think it's up to the kids um, to, to really go to the diary and, 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 and express their need for that. Also, to go have a connection to the younger people of the diary who can take it to the older people. You always know that um, the older generation, um, they, come, they come a long, 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 long way. They, you, you don't need to disturb directly but there is a way to do it. Go yourself, see what you can offer, and see where things need to go. In this youth committee, you are doing it. For example, what Mustafa Sek used to say, what Haja just said, what Sohna from Michigan, Soma Betty just said. That's one way. There is no way the older people would do that. But you're doing it. You're taking it over without doing exactly what they did. What you're doing is more important than what they did. You cannot get them out from their speaking, just wall off among themselves, uh, not outreaching to anybody else. Um, you cannot get them out of there. You have to do things parallel with them. Thank you. I think we have one other question. question is to define Mbok Talibi. Okay. okay, the definition of Mbok Talibi. The definition of Mbok Talibi is the definition of Mbok Julit, who happened to be Talibi. That's all. That happened to be this time. This Julit is a Talibi. You, you, you share the same Sheikh. Sheikh Ahmed Bamba is your guide. That's Mbok Talibi. Thank you. Okay. Can you but wait it's on? There's no different from Mbok Julit. Okay. Can you elaborate on idea, the importance of um, giving ideas in Muridism? Oh, mashallah. That's a very good question. Hadiyya is giving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned giving in Quran numerous times uh, and, and, and emphasized so much, so much on its importance. And part of one of the pillars of Islam, you know, is giving, is zakah which you do yearly uh, if your wealth reach a full year after your personal needs are satisfied. The other one he mentioned is sadaqah, something you just take from your money and give it to someone who needs it. And that one can be given to relatives who are near you and next of kin. You can give it to faraway people. You can give it to Muslim. You can give it to non-Muslim. 
the sadaqa. The hadiyah is different from that. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when the zakah used to come, he gave it to the needy people. When give somebody give him sadaqa, musarakh, he gave it to the needy people. But hadiyah is like what do you call kado? Gift. Gift. He's a gift. When you give it to someone, you you choose to give it. It cannot be forced on anyone. It cannot be belittled. Or it cannot be uh, too big for the person who's giving it. Once you give it to the someone you want to give it, you open your heart, you give it. It's not the same as zakah. It's not the same as just sadaqah. It's hadiyah. Now, this giving, Sheikh Ahmad Bamba, radiallahu anhu, in everything we do in Islam, he chose the best of that. Make it a habit for us. You live with it. Hadiyah. The Prophet ﷺ used to take it also to put it in the war expense to, to, to expand Islam. And he used to consume it himself. So Sadaqah, the Prophet ﷺ never consumed. He himself chose to consume only Hadiyah freely. And Sayyid Ahmad Bama, you know him. Anything the Prophet does, that his preference. Simple as that. The other things are very halal. You can eat sadaqah, halal. If they give you to from the money from Baitul Mal, from the zakah, it's halal, you can eat. But the Prophet, the Prophet did not make it haram. He just chose not to use it. That doesn't mean, that's his personal decision. He chose not to use it. And he never said anywhere, nobody uses it. You see, Shah Amul Bamba also did the same thing. He take the hadiyah. But this hadiyah, he used it also to advance, to advance the qitna. Because of this hadiyah, he was able to help the needy, to support all finances needed in the muridiyah, especially the construction of the masjid. He can ask for it. Who sit down with my people of my age, joking, laughing, kidding, doing all of those silly things that we enjoy. And most of us think that daira should be about that. But you cannot force people to do it. Whenever we have project, what we give to it is not sadaqah, it's hadiyah. And as you know, the tariqah of muridiyah is a, 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 a movement of project. You know, we have always have project going on since the beginning of time of, 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 of this endeavor. We never cease to have project. The masjid, you see the masjid of Jirbel first. And after that, you see the, 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 the construction of the railroad. After that, you see the construction of Masjid of Tuba. After that, you have the, uh, the, 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 um, the, uh, the library. And after that, the renovation of the Masjid. After that, Baqiya. After that, Masali Kuljan. Now we have the university. And then the other small projects that everybody has. Okay? So these hadiths are essential, essential to the muridiyah. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of things to Hambama said about it. Tuba li abdin muridin sadiqin lahumu bi khidmatin aw bi hubbin ahwadiyyati. Okay. Once you are someone who adhere to, to the need of having a sheikh who can guide you to achieve uh, complete satisfaction by your Lord, you have to have a sheikh who can guide you. And that sheikh, when he has project to advance what is Islam in any moment, in any time, in any generation, if he asks for a dear, especially as we the murid, we have, we have to give. Also, all the projects that you see right now in the United States, all the masajids, you see beautiful masajid built by others than us, is done through giving. And take one thing for me. It is not done by any foreign government. It's not done. People tend to make you believe uh, some Kuwaitis or some Qatari or some Arab Saudi give money. No, 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 no. That money doesn't come to the United States. It's built locally. And I have this knowledge through proper experience. Mm. Okay. And we, the Murid, the Sheikh Hamad Bamba give us the um, the opportunity to do it without having a lot of money. 
And also, I, I really beg you not to be part of those people who look at this masjid built by others than us and say, yeah, they give $50,000. One will give $30,000. Believe me, the people who give this $50,000, they just start giving. I know this through experience. They come here young, they go to school, they work hard, they build the businesses, they save, they save to the end of their life. They become 60, 65, their 401k are full, their bank savings are cool, they invest, they have this, they have that. And what's the point if you give $50,000 and you have 10 million left? They're not giving more than we do. Look at us, we start giving by the time we are born until the time we die, we give. We give more than they do. We only have to organize it, that's all. But we give more than they do. That's why we can accomplish much more than they do. And we have the unity which they don't have. We have the guide in front of us, which is one, which is one, Sheikh Ahmed Baba. And all these projects you see, Rarely you see one um, in, in, in the other communities, rarely you see one that is started by one group and finished by the same group. You, you see one group started and they have fights until one group give up, another one come and then that's how it goes. We, Allah give us the unity around the Sheikh and the Sheikh make the Hadiyah for us more rewarding more rewarding than anybody else because it is a joy it's a gift choice you choose to give and it is spent in what is supposed to be spent which is to advance the khidma and the the, the clarity of that is look at masali kuljilan look at the masjid look at the university everybody know where the money goes so that's a good question i don't think even i answer it enough yeah it is, it is lawful it is halal mm. and it is a right thing to do as a, as a murid thank you um i have one question again uh alaikum she's from new york and uh mm -hmm. there's no full cap chapter but there is no we sitting too well mm -hmm. i think they're during you see, he is in the full guy youth group too. But um, yeah, mm -hmm. the question she said that she was wondering what advice Sir Mustafa has on the importance of collaboration and being unified, and what can he teach the young generation about what mistakes to avoid when organizing? Mashallah, what <laughs> him to do? Yasin, uh, so Mashallah, it's a good question. Okay, Mamshri um, Intuwa has given us orders. And orders, everything Sheikh Ahmed gave us order to do. It was ordained first by Quran and then by Hadith. And when he gives the order, he doesn't stop there. He turned it into a prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِّعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Allah give us Islam. Islam, the relationship of a Muslim with the other Muslim is brotherhood. It's the same question asked earlier, what is Mokum Talibi? Moin Bokujulit. Allah says, once you have that, you have one rope. The rope is Islam. Hold on to it. All of you hold on to it. And then, Sayyidina come, take that, give us the order, but turn it into a prayer. Ya Rabb, ij'alil muridina ma'an fi hisnikal hasina wa shamlaj ma'an make all my murids as one entity. An entity that will never get separated from each other. So the obligation of a murid 
always is to unite, not to ever divide, is to unite. But there is one reality. It doesn't happen overnight. But each one of us has his part. You cannot force anybody to do what you want them to do. But you can't force yourself to do what's right. And that's all we have. But the obligation of each Taliban and everywhere, every city, is to unite. Unite have, unity has um, its prerequisites. Some of them are, some of them are, husn uh, dhan, my um, good perception, good perception. Once somebody said, I am a Muslim, I'm going to the masjid. Once somebody said, I am a murid, I'm going to the diver. That person is good, is already good. He cannot be bad anymore because there is places that he can go to do some bad stuff and he chose to go to the masjid. So that person is already devoted from, is already cleaned up. He's good. All I have to do is to have a good perception of him. When he made a mistake, it's just a mistake, but he didn't intend to do that. But the hard thing sometimes is we, 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 we go at the masjid Somebody go to the Udu area and wet the floor. He's bad. He put water everywhere. Oh my God. He just wet the floor. Somebody come to the daira. Everybody's giving. He doesn't give. Oh my God. He's no good. And we, ju we become judgmental. So what we have to do is to do what we call in Wolof Refet Njort. Once somebody get up and say, I'm going to the daira, that person is good. He is, all of his error can be forgiven, just like your error can be, can be forgiven. All of it has to be forgiven, and then we see what's good, which is the intention to go to, 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 to the masjid or to go to the daira. Uh, things we do often, we all come short. No matter what, how we try, we come short. My intention is to always do good. And the best I could, should, what I should have done, I give 10 or 20, but I'm short. I give only one. Oh, shush, he's gone, only one. Who, who am I? Who am I to, 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 to be little what somebody does? Allah himself, he will reward good deeds. But he will reward near, intention first. That's what Allah rewards. No one has the right to belittle someone else's effort when it comes to doing it for Allah's sake. Our problem is judgmentalism. If we all stay away from it and have good perception of the other's action and appreciate the intention, the unity will be easy. But whether we do or we don't, whether we succeed or we fail, we have one obligation, is to unite. And we cannot unite until we think of others what we think of ourselves. That's why here in Foundation Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, we refuse, we refuse 100% to be judgmental of any Muslim, much less a Muslim, a Bokum Talibi. Because once, once we said, Aslam to Nafsi to Sheikh Ahmed Bamba, that's it. You're good. And then also, one more thing we have to realize also, we dramatize sometimes differences between murids. I don't. And we don't here in Foundation Jamal Bamba. Why? Okay. You and I may be different. You and I, Bokum Talibi. We may differ, differ in views, differ in approach differ in certain small things, but you never differ in what to do, which is the, to, to enhance the khidmah of Sheikh al-Khadim. And then what do you do? How are you going to do it? We're going to have a magal, we're going to have a convention, we're going to have a chant, 
you're going to go to Cuba, you're going to go to the CR. We all do the same thing. And then when we go to the Khalif, we all sit in front of him, remove our heads, look down, and give our idea, and extend our hands and say, I mean, and leave. We do the same thing, and everything we do in the same place. Our differences are very, very, very minimal and easily, easily solved. I think we can relate better, though, if we just, just think of each other, what we think of ourselves. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I think it's up to us, the youth as well, to uh, unite and not mm. among the folks and not say, you know, there is, these people are doing this here and there and just focus on ourselves, us youth, and try to see what we can do better and what we can bring to the Murid community in the United States and not wait for the older folks. Wow, uh, mashallah, Sinshia. Well, uh, you said, you just, you just said right, because you have one thing we, we, we the older people don't have, mm -hmm. okay? Difference, difference approach and different, you have one culture we don't have. You have the American culture together, right? Mm -hmm. And which is more open-minded in a, in, a, in a modern society than we are. I have my baggage from my uh, on upbringing. Um, what is a daira? I, that explanation can be different from me, from someone else. You guys, you don't have that. You have this common ground, common problem that you have in common country, in common generation, and you have the same motivation. We didn't. We come from completely, completely different background. Back home, some of us come from the Dara. Some of us come from families of... Uh, you know, merchants, some of us come from family of uh, government employee. All these people are in the khidma with different approaches and with different understanding of what the khidma is. You, the youth here in the United States, you are completely different. You have one culture and the khidma is still the same. Like I tell you earlier, it is the truth and it's the same thing. It never changes. It is the truth. If you apply it properly, it will prove its excellence. He said there are a lot of attacks against us Muslims that can affect us spiritually from the news, social media, and even in our respective colleges. How mm -hmm. we hold on to our faith and belief in times like this? Alhamdulillah. Everything is knowledge. <coughs> Alhamdulillah. Everything is knowledge. Uh, Manfrin Tuba tell us clearly knowledge is ahead of everything once you have it you are undisturbed Islam is so good and so pure when people attack it it hurts you the, the, the degree of the hurts you feel depends on the degree of your knowledge. The more knowledgeable you are, the less hateful, the less hurtful the attacks are. You don't even see it as an attack. You don't even see it as an attack because you just see ignorant people acting. Uh, that's why when Mam Sri Intuba tell us, وَالْعِلْمُ وَالْعَمُلُ جَوْهَرَانِ لِخَيْرِ يِدَّارِينِ يَجْلُبَانِ uh, that's that's one one thing, and he says talazum ta'lima wa ta'alluma, walam yazala lijanani sulam. If you want to succeed in whatever you do, know first. So whenever somebody attack you or attack Islam, don't be upset. If they say something that is not acceptable, just consider it as a false and then use it as an opportunity to learn more. For example, if someone says, the Muslims are killers, 
the Quran says, go and kill the infidels, which they love to say all the time. You just don't get hurt by that and leave it like that. Then it would look like you believe it. Say it to yourself, that's false, but I have to find out whether it is false or not. Assume it is false. That will reduce the hurt. And then you go find out. You're going to see that Al-Quran didn't say that. It says it, but it says something before and it says something after. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when you take the whole sentence, then you have a context. Allah says in the Quran, yes, fight them if they fight you. See, the word kill is not just go take someone and cut his throat. He says fight. Quran. Fight them if they fight you. When they stop, stop. But I did not ask you to fight those who don't fight you. Don't fight those who don't push you out of your homes. Don't fight those who want peace with you. But fight. Wherever you find them, fight them. But the first one is if they fight you. See, if you get that knowledge, you, you have enough to defend yourself. But if you don't have knowledge, the hurt will accumulate. So this time is the time to really go back and study what we have. And as Muslims, as Murids, we have no excuse. Mam Sirin Tuba tell us, this is my advice to you. Do it. If you do it, everything you want will be realized. And also, just one final point. Whenever you see the attacks on Muslims, the sale of books of Islam increase. And who's buying it? Non-Muslim who wants to know whether this guy is telling true or not. And guess what? They end up being Muslim. So my advice to you young people is don't be a shy. Display your Islam. Display it. Be proud of it. Carry your name aloud. My name Muhammad. Don't be called Mo. If your name is Muhammad, your name is Muhammad. If you're Khadim, your name is Khadim. Okay, just be proud of who you are. Display your Islam. Don't get hurt when somebody says something bad about Islam. Instead, get more curious and follow the teaching of Shaykh Ahmad Bamba mm. through learning. All right. Thank you. Uh, I think your answer goes along with the next question. He kind of said, Assalamu alaikum. I would like also to have Sayyid Mustafa advice on how a young Murid should handle interaction with fellow Muslims who have a different understanding of Islam. Alhamdulillah. Kulal Mustafa Sek from Allah Nadiya. Mustafa Sek, wa mashallah, Sayyid Mustafa. The answer will go back to know your Islam and know the teaching of Shaykh Ahmad Bamba, radiallahu anhu. And you know, once you know the teaching of the Shaykh, you know, you, you know the teaching of Islam. Mm -hmm. Interact with the non-Muslim is very simple. Respect them, consider them Muslim. But avoid to engage and dispute. Try to convince them and they try to convince you. It's not going to happen. Once the sheikh is true in your heart, no one can convince you to leave him. <laughs> That's for sure. And some of them, they don't believe that you should be holding on to a sheikh. That's what they believe, and you cannot change that. The only way you can change their them is through your own behavior. If they realize that at, when you come at the end of the day, in every situation, you are better Muslim than they are, and they will know it. That's where the respect will come from. So inter this is something that I really do. I live it, really. I have the experience. 
I am one of the people who are lucky enough to come here and uh, there is no more, there is no Taliban around. Just I was the only one here that I know of. The person who was second to me in Asif Talibi, um, I wrote the letter of Jebel that he did to Sheikh Abdul Ahad. I wrote the letter and his idea and sent it. We were the two of us. But yet, I choose to join the other Muslims, the other Muslim communities, part of the new masjids that were you know, getting uh, built around here, new communities. We have people who really disagree with having a Shia, who disagree with Sufism, who disagree with all of that. And I heard, I have heard things that really, really should bother you about Sufism. I heard one who says, clearly, he says this, Islam is, he cited that someone says it is lawful to, to call jihad against the Sufi. <laughs> Can you believe this? No. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and this person who said this, we go to the same message. I hear this same person. He said, the books of Imam Ghazali, and you all know Imam Ghazali, how much respect Sheikh Muhammad Bakhav radiallahu anhu have for him. But he said this, his books should not get into the masjid because he ruined his life, he destroyed all of his work by becoming a Sufi at the end of his life. This, this is the guy who said this. And guess what? This guy, time goes by, time goes by, we managed to have good relationship, we get to a point where he was convinced that we can bring the Maulid Gammu to the masjid. <laughs> wow. It's not what you just hear in jump because all of these nasty things that you hear about Islam, especially about our Mashayikhs, have been said before. They have heard it. All these hadith that this guy in the Quran use to belittle our sheikhs, the same hadith our sheikhs know it and still establish what they did. They know more than these guys. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is to increase your knowledge. But don't be part of the debate. I'm wrong, you are right, because that debate ends at la'natullahi alayka you're going to hell. Allah curse you and you go to hell. <laughs> and no matter how hard it is, we cannot say that to them. Right. So the other Muslim community, what I, pro, what I ask you to do, be a Muslim, be a Talib of Sheikh Ahmad Bamba, don't hide it, never. Pronounce it, tell them you have a Sheikh, Sheikh Ahmad Bamba, anhu. He's from Senegal. If they want to know about it, they can Google it. They can discover whatever they want to know. If they come with question, you can understand. Answer, you answer. If you ask me a question, you cannot answer. Go seek the answer and bring it to them. Mm -hmm. But don't be part of the senseless debate. Trying to convince them that you are right. Try to convince them that you are wrong. I'm going to just uh, finish this question by telling you what happened between me and this Sheikh. Mm -hmm. um, he says all of that, and he was tough, very tough, before 9-11. When 9-11 come, he become very soft. His rhetoric completely change, and I continue to give him the same respect that I gave him. Time goes by, time goes by, he kind of lost respect in the community and by, by, in many ways. And one day he come and asked me, Brother Mustafa, I see you respect me more than anybody here. <laughs> I said, oh yeah? <laughs> I said, she that's, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that's not good. 
He said, may, may I ask why? I said, because I'm a Sufi. He said, yeah, yeah, I do that. I said, that's why then? That's, that's the question. <laughs> <laughs> that's the reason. As a Sufi, we are taught, Ya Sheikh, to respect you for one reason. You memorize Quran basically more than most of us, and you memorize hadith best, more than most of us. For me, that's enough to respect you. That doesn't mean I appreciate sometimes what you say. It doesn't mean I agree with it. You just go to one ear and come to the other. But as me respecting you as someone who knows Quran, talk about it, yes. That's, that's giving you respect doesn't take anything away from me. And you see, it makes you feel very good. <laughs> you know, my sheikh taught me this, that I have to respect you. That's what we, and that's about it. So why the community doesn't respect you much? You ask that the community. But one thing that I want to ask you though, I see you take a book written by an American. You bring the book to the masjid. This book is praising Islam, but it was written by a Jew. And you talk about it and you bring the book to the Quran, to the East, to the masjid. I see you bring a book to complain about a writer who write bad about Islam. He mispronounced the name of Muslims. He said a lot of bad things. You bring that book to the masjid to talk about how bad it is and how we should react. And yet, this book come in the masjid. And I heard you before says the book of Imam Ghazali the defender of Islam, his book should not come to the masjid. Help me with the knowledge you have, reconcile these two. When did I say that? <laughs> I said, yeah, Imam Ghazali, you said that before even you bring these books. The whole conversation began. At the end, he admits, you can see someone, you think you know them and you don't know them. Mm. And we get to a point where he asked me more about all of the things we do, all of the sheikh we have, to a point where he understands why we do what we do. And he's one of the best friends of mine. So, <laughs> really, he's one of the best friends of mine. Uh, he's not saying that anymore. Never again anymore. Never again. He completely changed. And we never fight. When he used to say things about Sufi, I didn't talk back about it. We just wait for the opportunity to 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 open up, to get to to get um, to get to understand each other a little bit more. And Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, we're good to go. And he ended up welcoming the, the Gamu and the Magal and all of that. So I told him, no, I'm not. When he says we can bring the Maulud to the Masjid, I say no, we're not going to do it because I don't want you to be in trouble. <laughs> uh, our next question is greetings papa i know approaching approaching adults in the diary can be a challenge for some people and implementing mm -hmm. a chapter is even harder what advice you have for those who do not have a chapter in their city and yet but would like to do so and what tips do you have for them to implement new chapters i mean new chapters Okay. Who, 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 asked, who asked that question? It's Betty from Detroit, I believe. Uh, Betty from Detroit. Yeah. Mashallah. Um, I think you you and uh, you already have your rules and uh, and the way to do it is just take. I think um, someone in the community willing to register mm -hmm. to you. Is that how you do it? Yeah, uh, I think he's, she's more asking about how you can uh, talk to... Approach. Like you. Uh, 
approach the adults. Yeah, to, to help them start a chapter in their local. Because I know some people like for Dallas, for example, they are lucky enough to have people like you or Falu Chan that can coordinate and help them do whatever they need to do. So they asking on how they can uh, have people like that. How can, how can they approach people to start something like that, like a chapter in their diary? Okay, uh, if the diary mm -hmm. is part of FUNCAP, yeah. the same reason the adult chose to be part of FUNCAP is the same reason why the, the, the youth choose to have to choose to be part of it. It's very simple. Because when we come to Detroit, uh, for, for the first time we met an order from Cap to, to come to existence, the diary were there, they make the choice. Mm. Because they see this is the only solution that we have in order to put our strength together. The same, that's the same truth for the adult, is the same truth for the youth. Because everything is transitioning now to the youth, right? So if now that child wants to have a chapter and it feel anything that look like resistance from the adult, they can call me okay. because I am, I am in charge of communicating with the adult in the diary. Sure, yeah. that's, my, that's my job. But the same reason why the diary is member of FONCAP is the same reason why the youth chapter has to exist over there. Right. If you have a problem, take my phone number, 214-682-8080. I will talk to the adult over there. Inshallah. Inshallah. All right. Thank you. And uh, yeah, and for the people that are in the youth group, you can also reach out to me. And if you have any issue or, yeah, we can go from there. We can talk to you, Jolene, or, you know, just Sigma Safa to talk to them and then we can go from there. I think it's just a matter of understanding what you want to do. And yeah, it's just a form that you want to do that. So, yeah. thank you. Um, the next question is. All right. It says that it's a pleasure to have my aunt Sultana, who is an African-American, joined our webinar tonight. So thank you for joining. She is very active in the Muid community. Therefore, one question I might have is how we can make our brothers and sisters be more involved in our gathering and functions. Okay, where, where is it coming from? From for Penda June. It's from Penda June, from Philadelphia. Ah, from Penda, okay. But mashallah, um, it's always the same question about the youth joining, right? Uh, yeah, so I wanted to clarify that. I think she meant the uh, African-Americans to join. Oh, 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 African-American. Wow, mashallah. That's very, this is also one of your, we fell in this area as adults, really. Uh, what I notice is that the American Muslim American community, especially we have murid communities in America, who are American, African American. You have some. They, are, they are not very much involved. I think we the adults, I'm, I'm not even about talking about you the kids. We the adults need to have, um, need to reach out to them in a more, more aggressive way. Uh, I myself is still thinking how we're gonna how we're gonna do it better, but we have not done enough in that area. That I would agree that we need to do more. As far you are concerned, the best way is to just invite them to everything you do. One thing we should avoid though is to 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 include them into the Taliban -based stuff. Okay, sometimes some dieters, they want to just take one new American guy who's Muslim, bring him to the dieter and treat him like any Taliban. Mm -hmm. No, we should treat them as guests and allow them to enter at their own pace. Allow them to enter 
based on their knowledge and try to provide them with, with knowledge, not to just to make them act like we do. For example, Boussin Bunyewe, when the Sheikh come, you want to make him go to the ground and you know do all the stuff that they're not used to. If they come to the diary and they want to sit, if the Sheikh is here, they want to sit on top of him, let him sit on top of everything. If they want to interrupt, let him interrupt. If they want to behave the way they know how, which is which is normal, let him do that. But as time goes by, knowledge is what will make people understand or hold on to what they want to hold on to. If you just do it simply because everybody do it, Mam Swin to prohibit that in the first place. You should not just do something simply because everybody's doing it. You have to do it because you know what you're doing. If you don't know what you're doing, it's not time to do it. That is why I am very reluctant, really. I shouldn't even call it a failure, but I see, I know many of them who are murid. I'm in communication with them, but one here, one there. And they themselves are not one cohesive group you can say, okay, come on. Because they have also leadership problems. Okay? And they have individuality, mentality, individual mentality. Okay, me, me, me. This is how I see it. This is how I go about it. It's also there. Therefore, we invite them to everything we do. When we invite them, we give them the respect they deserve and let them behave at their comfort level. But let us work hard. This is the area we, I should say we felt. We don't have the information wide enough in English to share with them. Many of us also are not uh, clear enough in English to communicate with them properly. So you can do that better than we can, but you are lacking also <clears throat> the, the material needed in English to share with them. Right. And, and then when they come, what they, the African part really interests them. Okay, this is where you need to go really study hard the history of Muridism, especially the history of the Sheikh and the Europeans directly, his resistance, what he said about them, and um, the context in which he did what he did. This is the things that they are looking for at least the experience that I have with, with whom I have experience. This is what they're looking for. They want to know that. The only thing also that they know, some of them, not all of them, but some of them, they are really interested in the esoteric part. You know, the, the, the dreams and the, the, you know, the wilaya and all that stuff. Some of them would really like to talk about that. When you have people like that also, it's going to be very hard for you, the youth, to deal with them. Send them to the adults or find an imam who can communicate with them. But I think everything would start with knowledge, have enough of it, know the level of their needs, and bring them, help them, give them food, and know their need. If they need help, we provide. And that's one of the way I think I'll, I will approach it. In, in our area, in, our, in the education side, we need to provide with more material they can use. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, we also need to uh, mm -hmm. have events. Like when we have muggles and stuff like that, especially with the youth, we need to have some corners where everything would be. In. And I think she's, before we go to our next question, if she can contribute what she thinks we can do to help them. And yeah. Please. You have the floor. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Wa alaikum salam. Alhamdulillah. I was about to say, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I have been a Moorid now for, um, since about 2000, 2001. Mm -hmm. um, I've traveled to Senegal many times as well. Um, just want to clarify that we do have some 
established African American Murid Daras. Mm -hmm. um, we have one in Chicago with Sheikh Abdullahi Bamba Bay. We have uh, who has Talibay also in Arizona. Um, they are also organizing and doing uh, different kinds of events um, mm -hmm. as far as you know helping the community. Mm -hmm. um, in my years of being a murid here in Philadelphia for the last 13 years, mm -hmm. um, what I've experienced when it comes to integrating our African American murid brothers and sisters with the mm -hmm. Senegalese uh, murids is, um, of course, the language barrier is one mm -hmm. of the biggest uh, obstacles. Um, but we we are never actually contacted at a, the early planning stages of mm -hmm. the events, like the Moguls, because um, if we were actually included on the planning process, mm -hmm. we would have the ideas of what to do when it comes to translation and also mm -hmm. help get the material out in English. We have mm -hmm. a, uh, our Jurin, uh, Shiloh Lampfall, has spent many, many years translating conceders into English. Mm -hmm. We do, he does amazing classes. We break down the casitas in English, go through line by line, find out where the uh, Sheikh took it from the Quran, where the verse came from for Hadith. We study the casita in English very mm -hmm. thoroughly. Um, and that information is being shared with other African-American words. Mm -hmm. So our biggest issue, I believe, in bringing us together is in the initial organizational stage. We need mm -hmm. to be contacted, our jurors need to be contacted, um, you know, our Taliban needs to be contacted when it's time to plan the model. Uh, they, you know, call us and say, we're planning the model. Uh, what contribution would you like to make? How would you like us to facilitate the translation? And we can tell you the best way what we mm -hmm. need as a translation. We don't need someone to have, we don't need to have our Taliban come and in sitting there listening to something wall off for three mm -hmm. or four hours just to mm -hmm. have a summary, five, a five minute summary of the whole night at the end of the night. Agree. That doesn't work anymore. So we would I like agree. to sit down and speak with, you know, the planners and organizers and come up with a, you know, a technique that would be beneficial for everyone and allow the American words or the English speaking words to be on the same page at the same time during the conferences and, the, and when someone's speaking, we can be you know in real time with the conversation as opposed to waiting and waiting for so oh, okay mashallah this is our goal um so mm -hmm. i say that's the biggest thing contact us ahead of time bring us okay. in the organization as far as the organizational period when it's time to organize an event mashallah who who, who is your jody during shiloh lamp fall he's he's oh, a lamp, lamp, fall. Uh, lamp okay 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 that's the he's a Jewin here for the, for us in Philadelphia. And we okay. have a you know a couple other brothers that are working in Maryland and DC, uh, African American Moors that are organizing their, you know, Daras in English. So we're there. We like you say, the biggest thing is unity. When I had to give a speak at one of the Moguls, I did a prayer and the first thing that came to me was the word unity. So it is about unity. Um, we can't let our language barriers keep us separated, you know. I am in charge of the uh, education part of FONCAP, Foundation Sheikh Ahmed Bama. Mm -hmm. could, could you help me with um, whomever in charge <coughs> of communicate, uh, education in the area, in, in, in that area? In Dallas. Yes. In Dallas, in Arizona, in Chicago, in wherever. Okay. I will, I will make contact with them because the area where we really can integrate mm -hmm. the two communities is through education. Mm -hmm. Because the two cultures are completely different. It's very hard to reconcile. Because you cannot teach the whole community English, nor can you teach the whole community uh, work. Exactly. But once, what one common language we have is the Qasida. Right. So if I know what's in it through you, or you know more of it through me, Mm -hmm. That is communication that causes us to share. Mm -hmm. That that gives you a role to the the stage of planning everything we do. You see what I'm saying? For example, if we are planning a muggle and we want someone to speak English, okay, education, 
is part of organizing and planning what we're going to say anyway. Right there, you have a reason to say, okay, Sister Sultana can be in charge of that. So you're going to go bring the speaker in English and do things like that. Mm -hmm. And that can be from the beginning. So there's a reason right there we can make it easy. That doesn't mean um, the whole thing going to be in English because we're not there yet. But for the youth committee, that's happening already because we are in this meeting and it's 100% in English. But with the larger population, we cannot have conversation in English all the time. Well, it's not about having a full-on you know, event yeah. in English, but it is about having a balance and knowing yeah. when to bring the English in so that people are not sitting there for hours and hours at a time not understanding anything until that English mm -hmm. presenter comes on. That doesn't it's, work either. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. For someone like you to engage something like that, you can be in charge of bringing something like that or recommending someone, and then people like that will be able to 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 widen the invitation to include people because the the, the bigger the I mean, English speaking number is, the the longer the talk should be and the longer the attention is paid. Well, we've had that. We've had several uh, events where we had numerous African Americans that used to attend quite consistently until after a while, mm -hmm. they just they just got tired of sitting around there for hours and hours and not understanding. And they slowly, one at a one at a time, fell off. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Wow, that that happens where in Philadelphia or in where California, Philadelphia, where whatever it doesn't matter. When there's a group of African Americans that have found a, a you know a, a community of, of murids and they start mm -hmm. attending the events or attending the Dara, even they coming to the Senegalese Dara. I used to go to Senegalese Dara all the time with a few other African Americans, and eventually just one by one they fell off because just that it, it's almost like a shun. It feels like it's like a wall there. We're sitting there. We're like we're here. And mm. we're not getting anything from this until the very end. And then they give us a five minute, you know, oh. off. and we like, well, what did we get from this? We didn't get the nourishment that we yeah. came. Yeah. 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 Mashallah. Wow. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I think we have two more questions and then we should wrap up. One is from Tenning Gay from New Jersey and recently moved to Atlanta. Assalamu alaikum everyone. My question is more like a seek for advice. As second generation immigrants, some of us were lucky enough to be exposed to Islam at a young age and have our parent made, us, made sure we are always practicing. What advice would you give future parents when it comes to Islam and Muridism and raising their kids in America? Mm. Yeah, yeah. So like that question ask by every generation. <laughs> well, Wallahi Dali, 10, 20, 30 years ago, we were in the same boat. Um, just practice yourself and uh, keep practicing and associate yourself with those who do the same thing. Mm. Like my friend Tuba said, that's the key. Avoid, avoid anything that is not appreciated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything or anyone, including social media, including um, a person in person who can talk to you, including an environment in which something wrong can happen. Stick together with those who does what you're yearning to do, okay? You stick yourself with someone who always guide you to do the right thing. Uh, once you do that, the rest will be uh, will take care of itself. Like I tell you earlier, the teaching of Islam is the teaching of Shaykh al-Qadim is the truth. Hold on to it. Practice it the best you can. It yields nothing but excellence. If you have children and they, 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 they see excellence in you, they will emulate you. That's what it is. So whatever you do or want to do, 
for your kids to do, do it first. If you're already married, alhamdulillah. But if you are not married yet, make sure you choose a good wife. If you are a lady, a girl, make sure you choose a good husband. Because that's the first right a child has. The first right of a child is to have a good parent. Mm -hmm. And then give a good name. If you both are Muslim, the child born Muslim. What you do is what he's going to emulate. And the truth, consider the truth. It doesn't matter how terrible society is. Believe me, if you hold on to the truth, the truth will take care of you. It will protect you. But what hurt many people is calling yourself a Muslim and you don't do what Islam says. You don't pray and you don't pray on time. Okay? You don't avoid the haram things. You don't you eat haram stuff. You call yourself a Muslim, but it's going to be very hard to behave like one. And doing the good thing that Allah wants us to do, the, the, you, if you do a little bit, Allah will give you the strength to do a little bit more. After that, a little bit more. After that, a little bit more. Until doing all of it become a habit, become a normal way of life. That's, that's, that's the Quran, that's the hadith. The little bit you do consistently will keep you doing it. And the more reward you have, the closer you get to Allah. And the closer you are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you love doing what you do. And the more pleasure you find doing it, and the more dislike you have for anything different from it. This is the truth. Allah loves him. So may Allah guide us all, but let keep us with good company and always, always learn more. Inshallah, thank you. Um, this next question is from Muhammad Sambu. I don't know where he's from, as he hasn't replied yet. But he asked if his music haram. <laughs> 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 that's that's a good question and as old as time yes and maybe okay <laughs> yeah there are we the talibay of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba then you just, we just say it's haram okay simple and put it that way um, that's why we stick with the qasidas we listen to it instead of anything else. We listen to the Quran instead of anything else. And to say haram, yes, is be to be on the safe side. You see what I'm saying? And this is what the Sheikh told us to do. Be on the safe side. This is something that really make you happy in your heart of heart. The, the same effect you have from music, you can have it from the Quran, you can have it from Zikr, you can have it from uh, uh, Hasida. If you train yourself to it, if you put your heart into it. Some people say, oh, it's not haram because it makes you only happy. Well, <laughs> listen to the lyric. The lyric we have now is haram, absolutely haram. Well, if you just go to the store and buy music, just, it's haram. The kind of lyric you hear, I, I, I cannot even repeat. I mean, I can even, not only repeat, when I hear, sometimes you go to the gas station, somebody turn on his radio, putting gas on, open the door, what you hear just, shake your whole body. You, know, you want to throw you on the ground. You say, how in the human being can listen to this? It's too loud. It's too ugly. <laughs> oh yeah, that's haram. Absolutely, that's haram. Okay, maybe. Maybe, Dagana. Maybe, for example, if someone say, Ya Rasulullah, and then the thing go, di -di 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 -di. <laughs> That <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then that will lead you to another one 
will lead you to another one mm -hmm. until that one I'm talking about, the door, the, the, the car opened the door at the gas station, you get to that one. Mm. So anything leads you to absolute halal, absolute good, that's the one you choose. Anything that has the opportunity to lead you into something, even that thing itself is not the haram thing, but it can lead you. It has the door open for you to go uh, one step further into the haram one, you just consider it haram altogether. And this was the approach of Mamsri Intua. If two things are here and you don't know whether it's haram or not, just consider it haram. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, and then you're safe. If this thing is absolutely halal and you know it's halal, stick to it and limit yourself there. Yeah, I don't think we have any more questions. So I'll open the floor to contribution. Yeah. Anybody wanting to contribute? Uh, I think we have. Okay. Yeah, this is a message from Sahma Mai. Say salam, everyone. Mashallah. Thank you, Bai Mustafa Job. We learned something new today, and everyone here, Sahma Tening, it's a great pleasure to welcome you in Funcap Youth Atlanta. So I think, Sahma Tening, you have some people you can reach out to for Atlanta, inshallah. Uh, Saint Josie Mai, can you unmute yourself and provide your contribution if possible? First of all, uh, uh, Salam alaikum, everybody. Uh, it's a uh, Saint Mustafa joke. Uh, uh, we would like to thank you on behalf of everybody, honestly. Uh, this teaching really touched us, especially that. And uh, this is a great innovation and everybody should follow your lead. And uh, this is a, uh, like a deep inspiration. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, whatever you guys need, we will be here and we will help and also I'm sure and positive that we need you guys' help. Uh, this is uh, like, it's like one team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we here as uh, like for one mission to spread Shamat Bamba teaching. And we should show it not only to uh, speaking or to talking but we gotta demonstrate it to action mm -hmm. and I think that's where you guys are at. And mm -hmm. especially coming from Senegal, I think we already even though we don't we cannot know the share fully, but mm -hmm. we know the little bit of we know about the share. We gotta share it with these people uh especially the African-American and the whole world, like doesn't matter what race you belong to, but uh, the African-American, and we see it right now, you know, where the world, uh, mm -hmm. like, you know, the trouble, the drama and everything going on. And I think uh, Bamba is only solution. Uh, we try to do the same thing, you know, as NST, as like, cause everybody who's here and black, I think you're African American, you coming from Africa and you in America, so you're African American. So we all the same, uh, even though, uh, the language is a, is a barrier, but we got to overcome it. We're praying for Sri Mutaha for a long life and health and for Sri Sheikh Jamufa. Sri Mutaha Jerejif, Jerejif Siri. Thank you. Abdullahi Siri. Abdullahi Siri, uh-huh. Okay, he's from Wisconsin, I believe. And uh, yeah, what advice do you have for young Muslims to Islamic knowledge? Alhamdulillah. The advice is very, just 
what we said before. Uh, learn from the books of the Shia. It is made especially for someone who's in a hurry and wants to know something quick to hold on so you can get nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My advice to you is take any tazawudus, any book like Tazawudu Sirar, Jawharun Nafis. They are good, good to start with. If you put it this way, you, you will achieve a lot in a very short period of time. If you can have it in English, all of English, Arabic, whatever language you can find it, Tazawudu Sirar, Nafis. Nahju, Munawir Sudur, Tanwir Sudur. If you have these five like this, after that, you are sufficiently ready to, to really practice your Islam flawlessly. Um, I repeat, Tazawud Sigar, Jawharul Nafis, Masalikul Jinan, Nahju, Masalikul Jinan, Masalikul Jinan, Nasafullah. Once you have these five books or six books, and they are all short books compared to the writing of other people, uh, the Sheikh, remember in these books, he took the best of many things, many books, put it together in a very clear, simple way for a beginner. And then remember the goal is to worship Allah in order to increase nearness to him not to be part of the dispute, who's right and who's wrong. We just now, the, the, the Shia have sealed us from us. We already know the Shia is right. We don't know what anybody else is. And then we blindly follow this way and then we good to go. <laughs> you know? You know? Yeah, that's my advice to you. And these books are available. And oh. also here in Funkab, we are working very hard into the translation and soon we're gonna have something available. So alaikum. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so Haja, you will take care of that. Yeah. She, somebody's asking to list the name of the book. Can you repeat that, please? Tazawud mm Sigar. -hmm. Okay. The, pro, the, the Providence of the Youth. Yeah. Masalik Jawhar uh, Nafis. The, 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 the Precious Jewel. Masalikul mm Jinan, -hmm. um, the way to paradise. Nahju, Nahdu Qadaul Hajj, and Munawir Sudur, Munawir Sudur. Those, those, those books. If you finish those, my, I mean, you're ready to go. Uh, there is one more. I forget the name, and I used to read it. There's one about for um, students. Forgetting the name. Seeking uh, knowledge. Kunkatiman, you said? Kunkatiman, yeah, that's the one. Yeah, Kunkatiman, that's, ish, mashallah, that's what I have to close on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, 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 Kunkatiman is advice. We, we're going we're gonna to talk about it and then close it on, inshallah. And just to remind people, uh, it's not to remind, some people were new about it, but so we plan on having a WhatsApp group Actually, three WhatsApp group, one to teach the Hasidas, one to teach the Quran, and one to teach how to read Arabic. So we will start with the one to teach how to, uh, to, teach how to read Arabic. And uh, if you join the group, the youth group, we will share the link there soon once we start it, inshallah. So please don't forget to fill out the form that I sent in the group chat. And someone mentioned Jawabu Sahnaq bin Dajob. That one too is very important, especially for women. Inshallah. Yeah. And the last question is for is from Omar Juf from Lafayette, Louisiana. All right. So he said, I hope Funkab is planning to do very different. But he commanded the teaching of Borontuba. I think that's what he meant. The teaching of Borontuba while urging children to be better in a professional way. Yeah, Senor Mark, can you write that again or just say Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, it's kinda of like a lapsus, I'm sorry. <laughs> Like between like how they uh, can like structure them to have to better like shape themselves to be a better murid, understanding the teaching of Shahmat Bamba while mm -hmm. going 
to like example over here in like you've been here like the Ghanaian community mm -hmm. they combine those they go to church they get into the field of engineering you know stuff like that if we increase our numbers I think it will help African American to join us more that's what I mean like Concap is like planning to do different to put a lot, a lot of focus on terms of like teaching like what you said a while ago like to learn, to teach children the book of Shahmat Bamba, learn Arabic and stuff like that, mm -hmm. while giving them like a prompt advice, go to school, you know, you're gonna be, you know, in the better standard, you know, mm -hmm. get a good job. Yeah. And okay. integrity, stuff like that. That's what I meant. Uh, can I speak on that a little bit? Yeah. 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 I think most of us here are students or finished college, have degrees and working, while we are also active in diners. So I think um, for yesterday, for example, I was talking to Lemon Bay, the general secretary of uh, FONCAP, and he put me in touch with someone who can help us in that area too, and uh, with scholarships and resources and stuff like that. And also this webinar, like I said in the beginning, is not limited to uh, religious teaching only. So sometimes we can have topics related to professional stuff and mm -hmm. school related stuff. So it's, it's, it doesn't stop there. As far as phone cap uh, youth, I think uh, we are all encouraging um, every single of us to do good in school and wherever you work at. And also, you know, be active in the diaries. So I think that's the main focus. Everyone here, I think they are in school or been into school. So, so Mr. Five, you have something to say. Well, Hana Disantubach for the opportunity to have, you know, this setting here and being the first started as a privilege to me. And I uh, really appreciate the impact that it has on me personally because I know people are paying attention. And then when you speak, all you want is people to listen. Can and you did. I stop you for a minute? I forgot to mention something before we close out. I mm -hmm. need to up. So I think we have had meetings about that. And a quick update, they wanted to include the youth and give them their special price. We talked about that, but that's not going to happen this year. So they are going to keep it the way it was. So if you are under 18, you will be under your parents. And if you are over 18, you'll have to pay $70. And uh, for people who don't know what Adia to Rahma is, I think Sunil so Mustafa can elaborate on that. And uh, also uh, tell us a little bit more how, about how the youth can help and if they want to join Adia to Rahma. Um, so Adia to Rahma is basically a program from uh, FONCAP. So if it's a yearly program, you pay $70 a year. And if you happen to pass away in the year, they will take, they will be, FONCAP will be in charge of uh, transporting the body to Senegal. And uh, if one of your close relatives passed away, then they will give you $500, I believe. So yeah, uh, the program is starting this month and it is open for two months before they close the registration. So Sir Mustafa can elaborate on that a little bit. I wanted to close out with the Kunkatiman, like I promised you. Oh yeah, please. But uh, what, like you say, with the, um, with the Adiyat Rahma, Yes, like what you said, it covers any member to be shipped uh, to Tuba, inshallah. And if his or her parents pass away over here, the same thing is covered. Uh, if he's back home, he's going to be helped with $500. And every adult over eight, 18 and over must contribute $70. And we are an, an encouraging the young to, 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 to help their parents carry this burden. So if you are 18 years old, please uh, register. Now the link is available. Anybody can directly wherever you are, it takes you no more than three, four minutes to do it. Uh, that's basically it. And there's an, you know, an understanding attached to it. You can read it before you submit it. It's not going to allow you to submit without reading it. Once you read it and understand the memorandum, then you can submit it. And basically, that's, that's what it is. 
So we encourage everybody to, to do it. So the advice that Sheikh Ahmed Bambara Dialan gives to uh, this theory call this small portion, it's not even, it's too short, easy to memorize, but and this, if you understand it and practice it, you will achieve everything you want to achieve in life. Uh, if you understand it, it looks like it's talking only to the student. Mm. But if you take the word student, of, you replace it with anything you do, it's talking to you. The word mutaallim, mm. you can replace it. You Uh, Lumuchi <laughs> Loy def lunek, don't you dengue ligay, don't have doctor, banga don't engineer, IT, lomana don. Halis bungati jilly dig 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 boom don't see it. So you te dig na don't sell lalga at lavanga. Hm? Halis boom don't see it. Sell lalko jik, level ku jik, no don't see it. Bulolu jito rek, luchetek, worst lay don't to Sunubram than Rokojo. To Sunubram was the green book at no Johnan Kobonapi, Bindan Kobonapi. Bunjangi tech mujahnu ko bunjangi doctor mujahnu ko bunjai chamar sab mujah. Saat ki bisa dunako bisa ki dunako am don't din koi bugal dalu. Kon nang ko sell dal mujite lajik skode fena lagai def boko sell dal le linga chhe bugal dam ko am nangar ragal yalla giri chhe dinenchi loy def lunek jital kuchi. Manam boy wood was sick, well and would come from Ragalchi Alatalo and the wood could get Dundelekudinenchi. 
waye ne lo ko wut ngir lola fek na lola dang ko ci man bu nopi bo ci dundal li diine am ñaar yep hmm na na nga sori nak de nga def na na il kawaki wal qurani lolu nak ndaw ñi yeen do ko yegal ci ki rek ci anglais tout rek the sheikh is saying to all of us in this this small booklet that we have to be patient in life especially when we are seeking knowledge patient is the key to achieving anything you set for to achieve if you don't have patient you may not succeed and not only you have patient but you hide it you hide the pain and never complain to man mm. never complain to anybody don't complain for the sake of complaining and be steadfast and determined and display gratitude display gratitude and your attitude and in your action until everybody consider you the happiest man around while you may be suffering because when you are seeking knowledge Allah will not provide to you in if if you busy yourself thinking about what you are lacking so i'm not having my bus i'm not going i am not having the nicest bed in university so the university is not good i'm not attending it look for the quality of service that you can get in everything you do or you can offer in anything you do in order to get the best benefit of it uh it says dawim ala dusil ulumi mutali'an ya way hatim sin bi tawayyut jamil when you are studying revise your lessons learn it properly and go back to it it simply mean whatever you do whatever you do double check yourself make sure is correct mm. and never make it too late for you to correct what was wrong that's what we mean dawin ala dars al mutali'an review so we have to review ourselves we have to review our faults in order to adjust to adjust ourselves in a better doing in a better way of doing things la tastaghil bil rizq is rabbul wara mutakallif al rizq allazi yata'allam if you are a student seek knowledge allah is the one who is in charge of your rizq of your your, your provisions this way as a professional young professional what we have to understand is is not the salary that should motivate you first the the cleanliness of your way of do, doing it the professionalism the sincerity you bring to the table should be your priority not the the salary before you turn your hand and say pay me you have to ask yourself have i done it right am i being honest in, in my statements this am i doing my report correctly you see like i said this qasida this little book leg like, if you take the word student if you take the word seeking knowledge of and you put any name in it it will fit for you wahsal illaha li dinihi mutahafizan is la yanalu al-ilm nasin mujrim clean your act in everything you do because someone who disobey allah someone who disgrace who someone who who transgress will never achieve what he is looking for what is a diploma or what is a promotion whatever it is is not going to achieve it na il kawaib wal qawani wa'tazil in tadnu minha min riddan la taslam stay away from the opposite gender if you are not married never engage with them without the proper reason for the purpose of marriage it doesn't matter whether you are a student or you are a professional at work at school wherever stay away from the opposite gender if there is no reason of lawful marriage between the two of you because if not 
you're not gonna achieve what you want, and all you're gonna get from it is blame and hardship. And you, you can do, know that right now in the workplace. You can be accused of anything. At school, the same thing. So, like I said, if you take this book, let every name you erase it, you put your what your qualifications are, it will fit you. It says, La tastri dunya bi ukhraya fata man ba'a nuran bi dja fasayandam. This dunya, the rizq, the provision that you can have here is already decided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's already decided. Doesn't matter what you do. And then, earlier I said, وَمَا قَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ The only purpose we are here is to worship Allah. Why? In order for ourselves to take charge of tomorrow so we can provide for ourselves. That is our responsibility. Here is the responsibility of Allah is taken care of. He leave us the responsibility of taking care of tomorrow. No, the Sheikh is telling us, don't neglect tomorrow because of today. So don't sell tomorrow and buy today. Okay? La tastrid dunya bi ukhraya fata man ba'a nuran bi duja fasayandamu. Man ba'a nuran bi duja fasayandamu. Whomever Whomever sell light and by darkness is going to regret it. So knowledge is light. Knowledge is light. Ignorance is darkness. If you choose darkness over light, you have bought regret. So this dunya is darkness. The day of your judgment is light. We should not sell sell the ladder for this one. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi sahbihi wa khayri khadimihi wa man wa ala yad bal nyaq. Thank you for joining and please don't forget to fill out the form. It's in the group chat. And we will communicate inshallah uh, the next topic, the topic for next month inshallah and, uh, and the dates. So thank you for joining. Thank you all. وجد وجل من تقريمه بانا في زار مولد من في البار ربا فنكاب تي في تلخادم رسول جران جن جف تي فيديو بيجن دون سيتان كيب كتي بغات ينن فيديو نغي ابوني في تي فنكاب تي في فنكاب دي فونداسيون شيخ أحمد بامبا بنور أمريكا بيجا خامنه مولكلي دائرة ينك في تي اتازوني Actually, Canada.